Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to help you uh, understand how to calculate gravitational potential energies. So first of all, some qualifiers here. We're going to talk about uh, gravitational potential energies as they are restricted to the surface of the Earth. So this is something you can do, you know, these calculations are good anywhere you want to go on the surface of the Earth, but they're not good. This is not how you would do it if, for say, uh, you were talking about something happening on a planetary type scale or, you know, anything where we're far enough from the Earth that we can see the uh, curvature of the Earth. So gravitational potential energy, here's how it's calculated, MGH. I'll talk more about that here in a minute. What I do want to point out is it's a work term, basically. See how mg is a force times the distance h. Right, so it would have units of, of uh, newton meter or joules, because that's what a newton meter is. And for the sake of this discussion in this video, for gravitational acceleration, which is about 9.8 meter per second, per second um, I'm going to just approximate that to 10 just to make the math very, very easy. And what we're going to chat about in this picture is Timmy's ball here, which is, uh, you know, right here. And we're going to assume the mass of that ball is about one kilogram. Probably, maybe that'd be a little heavy for a basketball, but maybe it's got a little sand in it or something. So we're going to take a look at the ball, and we're going to think about how its potential energy changes if Timmy drops it so that it accelerates down and lands in this hole down here, which is next to this building. Don't ask me why that somebody's got a big hole in the building, but that's what we're going to do. And we're going to calculate potential energies at what I'm going to call position one, where Timmy uh, first drops the ball from. Draw another picture here. Let's say here's our ball right here, kind of ground level. I'm going to call that position two. And right before impact here, we're going to call that one position three. And we're going to take a look at these uh, these numbers. All right, so PE1. All right, it's going to be an MGH term. And before you can calculate a potential energy, you have to define where to measure the potential energy from. That's called your datum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line here. And I'm going to go ahead and put it at ground level. Ground level is a real common uh, datum location for uh, gravitational problems. So this line right here that I'm drawing in green here, that's going to be our datum. That's where we're measuring our potential energy from. Anytime this ball is above the datum, all right, its potential energy is some positive number. Anytime it's at the datum, its potential energy is zero. And anytime it's below the datum, the potential energy is negative. Now, where the datum goes in a problem, well, um, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to proceed with this problem uh, assuming a datum at the ground, but I'll probably make another video here or at least before the end of this talk about how would the problem differ if we use a datum, if we put a datum somewhere else. But anyway, for now we're going to proceed with uh, the datum as shown. So the PE1 term, right, that's going to be an MGH. Now I would normally call it like H1, the height of the ball in position 1. And when we put numbers into this, we're going to go 1 kilogram times about 10 meter per second squared times the height above the datum of 10 meters. Whoops. And I think what I'll do is I'm just going to take the units out here. When you take a kilogram meter per second squared times meters, you get kilogram meter squared per second squared, and that's what a joule is. Or you could think of it like this, uh, kilogram meter per second squared, there's your newton times a meter, that's a newton meter, which is a joule. So when we multiply this out, we get 100 joules. So the ball at the location shown at position 1 has about 100 joules of potential energy relative to uh, the green datum. Right, PE2. The potential energy of the ball at position 2 Right, MGH2, meaning the height in picture 2, and H2 is 0, so the entire potential energy term there is 0. Let's talk about PE3. Potential energy of the ball in picture 3, again that's going to be an Mg times H3. Now, I'm, here's how I like to handle potential energy terms. The mass is 1, 
g is 10, the height is 3, and we are below the datum, so this is a negative potential energy term. If you're wondering, could we put that minus sign with the 3, the answer is yes, that would work out fine. Uh, I like to think of it like this is a potential energy term, we're below the datum, so that's going to be uh, negative. Anyway, we multiply this out, it will be in joules, and we get minus 30 joules. Now, some things to consider here. Let's talk about now the difference in potential energy between positions 1 and 3. Now, if I write this out, that would be PE3 minus PE1, which is minus 30 joules minus PE1, which is 100 joules. And we get minus 130 joules. Now, if you'll humor me now, we're going to take this in a different direction. Let's just say I'm going to put a blue datum in now, except I'm going to put it at the bottom of the pit here, blue datum, and repeat the calculations. If I worked exactly the same calculations with the second datum, the PE1 would be MGH, except now our height above our datum isn't 10, it's 13. So we will get 1 times 10 times 13, and this will work out to joules, or in other words, 130 joules. And our PE3 would be 0, because our height is 0 in picture 3 if we're doing the blue datum. And notice now that if I took potential energy 3, if we did the difference in potential energy between 3 and 1, um, that would be PE3, you always do finus, final minus initial, by the way, minus PE1, PE3 is 0, PE1 is 130 joules, and you notice we get negative 130 joules. This is, this is a very important fact of physics here. The difference in potential energy between these two locations, positions 1 and 3, is 130 joules, no matter where you put the datum. And that's why it doesn't matter um, as far as being able to put a datum anywhere you want. Because when you're writing equations in physics, the only thing that ever matters are differences in potential energy. And the difference in potential energy between 1 and 3 is 130 joules, and it's negative, meaning that potential energy 1 is 100 joules, 130 joules higher in potential energy than uh, position 3. So we could put the datum if we wanted to. In fact, let me just do this. I won't write it down, but let's say we did a red datum. I'll put it right here. Boom. And now, anybody watching the video, ask yourself, well, what would PE1 be? I want you know, if you're watching this, just take a moment, see if you can figure that out. What would PE3 be? And what would the difference in potential energy be between 1 and 3? So I'm not going to answer that in this video, but um, uh, I'm just going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer. But you know, if you're watching and paying attention and you've heard me say that it doesn't matter where you put your datum, uh, the difference in potential energy will be the same no matter what. The answer hopefully will be obvious. But anyway, I hope that this... Uh, helps uh, anyone watching this understand how to calculate gravitational potential energies and realize that differences in potential energy uh, are not dictated by where the datum is. And that's a very important uh, fact of life for physics. So anyway, hope this video helped. Have a great day.